Good morning. Happy after Thanksgiving to you. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. It's time to get lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coming up on today's show, Elijah Bradford. He is in the house along with his new group, the Valentinos. Also, I have a letter, Ask Jeffrey, and it's a really good one. And plus, we're going to have a performance by the Valentinos. So stay right here. It's time to get lamp. Coffee cups up. Think he's out. Good morning. It's time to get lamp. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Everybody, everybody get up. Everybody, everybody get up. Come on. turn the lamp on. All right, it's time for the entertainment tea. I know you've been missing it, some of you. I love the fact that you all interact with us. Continue to go to our Facebook page, The Jeffrey Lampkin Show, or also email me at thejeffreylampkinshow at gmail.com. I love corresponding with you. And thank you so much for knowing that you're watching the show and you're giving your feedback. So you said, look, we missed our entertainment tea. So here it is, I've got the latest and the greatest. First of all, let's talk about it. Kevin Clash, the voice of Elmo. Tickle me, Elmo. You think I can do a good one? I think so, maybe, I don't know. But listen, this story kind of just, it baffles me and it bothers me. So of course, Kevin Clash has been the longtime voice of Elmo on Sesame Street. Of course, all of us grew up with at Sesame Street, watching it on PBS while eating that bologna sandwich. Mm-hmm, you know that one that was fried in the pot? Crispy on the edges, a little bit of mayo? Yes, all right. But we were watching it, however. So Kevin Clash, just to bring you up to speed on the story, they're saying that Kevin Clash has been allegedly, and we're gonna say allegedly, that he had an inappropriate relationship with a man who's come out now, the man is 23 years old, Sheldon Stevens, is saying that they had a um, relationship when he was a minor, that in fact he was 16, that he was not of consent age yet. Now there's, he's, Sheldon is saying that during this time, they only had, you know, like there was some um, different things happening, nothing to an actual sexual nature. The sex actually took place afterwards, but that there were other actions that took place that weren't appropriate. Of course, Sesame Street, they investigated, and in the investigation, they found that although Kevin had made some um, bad decisions, some bad judgments, he did not do anything that was illegal. So he was allowed to keep his job. Well, Kevin comes back and Kevin resigns in the midst that another person comes forward and says, hey, you know what? I had an inappropriate relationship too. Now, mind you, catch this right here. They're saying that Kevin allegedly paid $125,000 dollars to Sheldon. Well, let me tell you what Sheldon does. Sheldon gets the 125. He thinks about it. He says, no, I don't want this, but it's too late because you've already signed the agreement. Now he's trying to go back and revert his story. Oh, it's too much. It's almost foolishness and mayhem. The only thing that gets me viewers about this story is this. You, you, first of all, if you felt that it was an inappropriate relationship as a minor, why didn't you go to the authorities? Why would you go straight to money? Something sounds a little fishy. Then number two, I have a problem with anyone that recant stories. So you first say that you know that he um, had relationships with you when you were young. Then you turn around and you come back and you say, oh no, it didn't happen. I take away the story. Then you come back and say it happened again. Would you make up your mind? Yes, you need to make up your mind. Who else needs to make up their mind? Rihanna. Let's talk about it. So you know Rihanna has this new album that's coming out, Unapologetic. And so they were calling this tour that she just recently went on, 777. Um, they're calling it The Plane, the 777 Mayhem. What ended up happening was Rihanna invited a lot of music executives, journalists, um, to go on this tour with her. They invited her to go on this tour. I'm at, see, my producer, he keeps me right. Thanks, Jason. Listen, gotta hurry up. So Rihanna was invited to go on this tour, invited all these journalists, and she was going seven countries, seven days, and she was doing this tour, and the journalists were supposed to be able to have this relationship with her, be able to talk to her, interview her. Guess what? Rihanna got on the plane. She saw them one day after that, Rihanna was ghost. Now, they're saying that Rihanna was actually, the reason she was ghost because she was, 
you know, smoking the weed, smoking weed, taking a little drink. Allegedly, this is what's being said. And she did not want the journalist to see her. And see, it could have been me on the plane. It should have been me. It would have been me. It should have been me because I would have been on that plane and I would have been let me out. Let me the first class because they're saying that it was just we can't even get access to you. Why are we on this trip? By the time the seventh day came, I had one journalist who said, you know what? I left Jeffrey. I left. I couldn't even handle it. Rihanna, really? And you invite them on this trip with you to be a part. You got to do it for the fans. You got to do it right. I think Rihanna does need some therapy, though. Why does she need therapy? Because you need therapy, Rihanna, simply because, mm, how do I put it? You're hurting, and we know you're hurting. You miss Chris Brown. It's okay, we understand, but you need to deal with your issues. If you don't love yourself, how in the world are you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, well, I gotta go. That's all the time I days. Are we done, Jason? That's all I have time for? That's all I have time for, y'all. I have more stories, but nonetheless, we gotta go. Stay right here, get your wig right, get your stocking straight, eat some grits, and that fried bologna I was talking about with a little bit of fat back. We're coming back with Elijah Bradford and the Valentinos right here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cups up, pinkies out. Good morning. Thanksgiving is around the corner. Where did the pilgrims land? Where did they land? Ooh, uh... You're gonna make me look like an idiot on television, aren't you? Pilgrims, right? What is that? What are, what are pilgrims? Um... In America? Um... I don't know. I want to say Maryland? Um... I think in Washington. Jamestown? No. Jamestown, South Carolina? Yes. Okay. Um, Plymouth? Plymouth Rock. Plymouth. On Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. Okay, Plymouth Rock. Where's that at? Massachusetts. Massachusetts, okay. Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock. You are good. High five right there. You know, let's just go with Fraggle Rock. Fraggle Rock. <laughs> if you love what Jeffrey is wearing each week, go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome & Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia style leader, Jerome & Company. Jeffrey Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coffee cups up, and your pinkies are out this morning. So we're talking all things music this morning. Of course, we talk music, and we're here in the South. Lit to me, it's the capital of music, but some people will say maybe Detroit. I beg to differ. Nonetheless, I'm here with an all-male group this morning, fresh out of Sumter, South Carolina. I'm talking to Minister Elijah Bradford and the Valentinos. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. How are you, How are you all this morning? Good. Uh, Y'all even talk... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all even talk in unison. That makes me excited. So tell me a little bit about the Valentinos because you're an all-male group and you hear a lot. Are y'all quartet? We are, but we do CCM as well. Okay, so y'all do CCM. Now, what is CCM for the viewers out there so they'll know? Christian contemporary music. Okay, so y'all do all styles of music. We do. Okay, so let me ask this question because you got four, four guys and all of you, you look like you're in your 20s. Yes. yes. You look like you might be 12. But it's okay, <laughs> all right. But most of you are in your 20s. So all of you are in your 20s. So how did you all come together as as young men? How did you all find yourselves with each other? Well, basically, we all grew up in the same area. Mm -hmm. So um, What area was that? In the Lee County area. Lee County. Lee County, okay. something County, right on that line, right okay. up in there. Mm -hmm. We all grew up in the same area, and we, and we would always, we were all... You grew up in the church, okay. and all our churches would commune or have programs of different things together, so we would always see each other. Okay, so this is something that actually kind of became established from grade school on, and then y'all kind of just stayed together over time. Best right? yeah, yeah. What is the greatest thing, um, Rick, about being part of a male group? Uh, the best part is, to me, is getting the experience of being in brotherhood unity. Mm -hmm. It's more about being unified than just being identified. So, you know, it's basically a working experience. As long as God is in the midst, we find. I like that. It's more about being unified than being <laughs> identified. Y'all going to get me going this morning right before you go to church. I told you you're going to get your sermon. Listen, all right, so EJ, you being a part of this group now, you, you don't only have the Valentinos. You're actually doing a lot of things because you've been on the music scene for a while. Tell us a little bit about your experience on the music scene. Well, I actually, um, I'm the manager of three groups. Okay. I have uh, Purpose Driven, which is my first baby. Okay. And I have Epiphany, which is an all-female group. Mm -hmm. And the Valentinos here, uh, which is my male group. I also have a community choir. We don't sing as much. Um, Keys of Life Choir. Okay. But um, I had the vision. Um, what I'm trying to do is uh, build a, uh, a sort of empire, kind of, of like a 
Barry Gordy did with uh, with Motown. With Motown. Okay. And um, so we are excited about that, and and God is opening up doors and allowing us to come together. And actually, um, the the amazing part about these guys here is that they're all the musicians for all three groups. Wow. So not only do they sing as the Valentinos, but they also they also play as well. Okay. This is what I, what I've seen. I've seen some flyers and stuff because the name of your um, your production company is Coffee House. Coffee Productions. House Productions. I've seen a lot of flyers. So you're doing a lot of events, especially mm -hmm. in the Sumter County and the Lee County mm -hmm. area. What is it like over there? Because you know we're talking about music and we're talking about the music industry and mm -hmm. being a part and having events and stuff. The community support over there it seems like the community is very drawn to quartet right yes is it difficult for you to branch out and do other styles of music with everyone being drawn to quartet it's not difficult um, however um, it, it, it can be um, it can be somewhat of a challenge trying to get people to expand their minds mm -hmm. Um, to be to, to be open to other kinds of music because like you said um, I am from an area that's heavy quartet and we love quartet mm -hmm. we love quartet um, but the world is bigger right. than quartet there's there's so many other gen genres of music so what we try to do is um, bridge the gap and do all kinds of music so that we can encompass every body so you know one thing because here on the Jeffrey Lampkin show we keep it real <laughs> you know we, we keep it real on the Jeffrey Lampkin show one of the things I'm going to ask because I've been out there on the circuit and so I've seen a lot of groups performing and groups doing things. Van, let me ask you a question. Have you seen challenges among that? Because you hear a lot of times about the bickering and the fighting right. between groups. Now, of course, you all are in gospel music, but let's be real. People are people. Right. Do you right. see the fighting among, and not physical fighting, but the I'm not going to support you because you didn't show up to my program or I'm not going to come to this. <laughs> Does that happen or is that just in our minds? Uh, of mm -hmm. course, that's that's reality, Jeffrey. Okay. Uh, with, that, with that being said, you have more than not just coming to your events. It's more like it's competition. Mm -hmm. You have competition, and it's sad to say because we're doing first and foremost we're doing the work for God. Right. So there is no competition. We all in it to glorify God. Yeah. But when you have, it's very challenging when you have folks, is especially in the musician, mm -hmm. the um, category, mm -hmm. because they feel that if you are capable of doing, uh, if you can play a note better or you can hit a lick, they feel that you're you're above everyone else. Mm -hmm. So how, it's quite how do you keep them motivated? I, and when you think about it, because they're the witness. I just listen mm -hmm. to one of your band members who witnesses this, who goes places and and see, and I see it. That's one thing about it. Jeffrey Lincoln will keep it real for you. I see it. I see the competition, <laughs> and I see where we try to compete with one another mm -hmm. instead of just saying that you know what you might have been on the circuit for forty years. I respect your style and what you do. Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing, and I'm just coming to bring something fresh and something new. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to outdo you. How do you keep that perspective, especially with managing? four different groups. We know who we are. Okay. When you know who you are, you're not intimidated by what another person has. Mm -hmm. So just say for instance, uh, okay, I play the keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, Van plays the keyboard as well. Mm -hmm. Now my gift and Van gift is totally different. We both do the same thing, but our gifts are totally different. Mm -hmm. I can't be jealous of him because of his gift and he can't be jealous of me because I can't be him mm -hmm. and he can't be me. Mm -hmm. So what we strive to do, what I uh, teach my groups is be the best you that you can be because nobody can beat you being you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's where a lot of the competition comes in that is because people don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. So because I'm afraid of you because, you are, because you're confident and you know who you are, it's out of fear. Mm -hmm. That's the answer, mm -hmm. it's fear. I will shoot you down, I won't support you because I'm afraid of you because you know who you are. But when I know who I am and I'm not afraid of you, I can support you. Um, I can stand up and worship when your music goes forth. You can stand up and worship when my music goes forth because we know who we are. But uh, most times when you find that it's because people don't know who they are and that is the reason why they are afraid to support others. Are there some groups right now that y'all can say when y'all just thinking your level mind, there are some groups out there right now that you'll say, you know what, I want to shout them out because they know who they are and they've been consistent. They maybe been on the circuit for a while and maybe they haven't been. But are there any ministries out there that you would say, hey, let me just shout you out because I love what they do and I actually will support them all the time because they they live what they sing about. Any groups in particular well, that come I would I would say first and foremost, the, uh, the groups that have been uh, very open to us, um, very supportive to us is the, the McDonald sisters. Okay. Um, That's, are they in North Carolina? Fayetteville, North okay. Carolina. They've okay. been very supportive of us. Um, other groups that we've come in contact with that have been awesome, Lisa Knowles and the Brown Singers. Okay. They've, they, they've been very... They've been Stella Award winners or nominated they, for they, they were nominated. Okay. Lisa is phenomenal. Okay. Phenomenal. 
Uh, Pastor John P. Key has been a great mentor um, as far as instilling into us what to do in the business. And uh, you would think that because he has such a high caliber that he wouldn't be as open as he is. But he's open. He's honest. Sometimes he might tell you things you don't want to hear. Um, I'm listening to you talk because you're talking. Now, you're naming people. And you know, I, I kind of know. <laughs> and let me tell you, because he's naming people. You're naming national artists. Yes. These are actual national artists. So you're talking about Lisa. You're talking about John, Pastor John P. Key. You're talking about... Um, the other artists that you just named. The McDonald's sisters. The McDonald's sisters. Mm -hmm. These are national level artists. Mm -hmm. What about locally? Absolutely. Um, um, some of the artists that I love uh, locally who, are, who I really love their ministry, Kristen Williams. Kristen Williams, yeah. She's awesome. Matter of fact, that's our, palm, our palmetto idol, Kristen Williams. Shout out to you. Good morning, <laughs> Kristen. Kristen uh, Williams is, is, is awesome. Um, we, we have other groups, Shonda English. Yeah. She's from Sumter as Shonda, well. Shonda, great talent. I mean, there are great so talent. many groups. I can The list can go on and on and on, and I'll probably get in trouble if I don't <laughs> What do you do? How do you manage it all? I mean, we're talking about four groups. So you're doing a choir. Mm -hmm. You have the Valentinos, mm -hmm. which I'm sure that they always, but then they're with you all the time, all the time. as well anyway. Right. Are there times, fellas, when y'all are like, can we sing a song? Or is he always <laughs> going to throw y'all behind <laughs> on, the, on the instrument? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's, t it's times where it comes to you, you just be like, man, easy. we just want to get out there and do our thing for just one second. But we understand that we have to play our role right we have to play how do you our role. feel when you when you're up there and you're looking at these groups and you're like I'm looking at these now you, you're not giving a hundred percent you're not doing it with the spirit of excellence how does that make you feel when you're behind and instead of you being out there saying hey I have this ministry I can do it well in the in the aspect of that with me I feel more confident because I know who I am when it comes down to it I know who I'm doing it for right. a lot of people sit down and they play for a show they want to make sure that if you if your licks are not right then they're gonna say oh he didn't do that right or if you do certain certain things that people just look at you and just be like oh my god where does that come from it's because it's not in this it's not in the flesh it's in the spirit wow. so it's giving more of an overflow to anybody else than any than just me Rick, as a I believe you're a preacher you're gonna <laughs> preach up in here this morning you're doing something to me listen we gotta wrap but real quick before we leave let me ask this question if you're out there into groups right now what would be the single piece of advice quickly to each of you just one word a single piece of advice that you would give to groups out there to make sure that they stay together and they follow God what is the one piece of advice uh, starting with you Van remain humble remain humble Rick respect respect loyalty Loyalty. Learn the principle of seed sowing. Learn the principle of seed sowing. You've heard it right here. Listen, we got to go. Fellas, I don't want you to leave where y'all sing for me. Y'all always want to sing. <laughs> I need you all to sing. I need y'all to sing something. That's what we're going to do. Listen, we've got to go. Hold it right there. I know you're getting ready for church. Get your wig straight. Shift it out real quick. <laughs> Coffee cups up. Pinkies out. We got more coming right here on the Jeffrey Lampin Show. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampin. <laughs> Every week, Monica Hilton makes fabulous treats for the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. The Cake Lady will happily make your favorite dessert for you, too. Give her a call at 803-466-3795. Follow her on Facebook and check out thecakeladysc.com to see more of her amazing work. Jeffrey <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Minister Elijah Bradford and the Valentino singing He's a Wonder. We just want to dedicate this song to the whole Coffee House Productions family, all the independent artists, and all of you, the viewers out there. Jesus is a wonder. Oh, Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. My Jesus, he's a wonder. 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 My soul, he's a wonder. Jesus, he's a wonder. My Savior, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. In my soul, oh Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. My Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Jesus, he's a wonder. 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 In my soul, he's a wonder. Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. My Savior, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Him so. One day when I was walking along, I heard a voice, but I saw no one. The voice I heard sounded so sweet, it came down from my head to the sole of my feet. Started running, I started shouting, and there was no time for doubting. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Him so. Ah, Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. My Savior, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. Jesus, he's a wonder. 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 He's a won
in my soul. He's a great in my soul, hater, harder and later. Makes my pathway brighter, and he makes my burden lighter. Life seems that sun is sinking low, that's why I've got to let you know. He's a wonder, he's a wonder. In my soul. Yeah, Jesus, he's a wonder. My Savior, he's a wonder. Jesus, he's a wonder. He's a wonder in my soul. Jesus, he's a wonder. My Savior, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a wonder in my soul. Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 11.30 to 2, and Sunday brunch from 10.30 to 2.30. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. Good morning, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Hey, we're having a ball this morning. So, of course, one of your most asked about and most requested segments, I know I haven't done it in a while, but it's back this morning. So, of course, I had to bring my girl, my special guest, Miss Alexis King. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. You know, the last time we did a segment, everyone got happy. Of course, Janet was with us, but she's off trollicking in the wilderness. So, therefore, we'll wait till the next time that she comes back. But we have a letter this morning okay. that a viewer wrote in, so let's, let's take a listen to it. Listen. Listen, dear Jeffrey, love your show and love the Ask Jeffrey segment. I need your help. It's holiday time and I am actually dreading. Of course, it says that the holidays is all about the family. However, I'm just not feeling it this year. This year will be my second year with my in-laws. And although I love them, I am not happy about going there this year. The long and short. My wife's mom cannot cook. Uh -oh. And the funny thing is that these people sit here and eat like they know it's good. Mm, not. The potato salad runneth over with water. Oh, I can only no. imagine that. The stuffing is like bricks. There is no way I can be jolly with this. And they always want me to eat just because I'm a big guy. I really want to go to my family and avoid having to do this. What should I do, Jeffrey? You always seem to know the way. And thanks for showing the good side of life. Forever a fan, Trey. So we got to give Trey some advice. Okay. Because Trey sounds like he's newly married. It sounds like, Trey, you know that this is what I tell people. Y'all write in these letters. We can only go by what we think. Sure, sure. So Trey sounds like he's newly married, maybe. Well, he mentioned that this was his second, uh, second Thanksgiving year. with the in-laws. Right. So I'm thinking they've been together a couple years. Yeah. Um, I want to get your take first. What's your initial gut feeling on this? My initial gut feeling is run. <laughs> and I know everyone is like, what? Run. run. The thing about it is the holidays are the time when you have food and you want to enjoy it. And right. you want to enjoy the fellowship. And how do you fake, you know, the funk? But here's my other it's portion hard. with it. When you're in a relationship, mm -hmm. a relationship is supposed to be with someone who you consider your best friend. And you should be able to, in a constructive and true way, say, Babe, now let's be honest. Like, you know, this don't, or wait till she cooks the perfect dish. Like, the dish is just good. Now, babe, this is good right here. This tastes good. But then when it comes to, you should be able to tell her, I, I guess if y'all are a partnership, mm -hmm. she should know that the food is not good. You should be able to say that without her, because she should know her, her man. I think, and this is what I think, again, we're just going on assumptions okay. here, 
But um, he, then this is Trey, could probably tell his wife, like, hey, I'm not, like, totally loving the Brussels sprouts that your mom makes exactly. or whatever. But here's the thing. I think, Trey, you're going to have to find a solution. And he he, has to here's go. why. Well, yeah, you're going to have to go. And it's, this is going to come up every year. So mm -hmm. this problem isn't going to go anywhere. And this is your new family, mm -hmm. like, like it or not. So my solution, well, one of my ideas might be eat, a, eat something before you go so that you're full. Maybe say something to your wife like, look, I, you know what? I don't want to be rude to your mom. I love your mama. Right. I do not love her stuffing. <laughs> so if you see me saying, you know, I don't feel good, just, you know, just maybe help me with that excuse or something. But right. you got to have a solution, a solution going in. Here's the solution. Here's what I think. Could, could Trey um, be like, hey, call your mom and tell her we want to bring two dishes just to help her out with the meal this year. And then Trey brings two dishes that he knows he's actually going to eat and it's actually good food and everyone else is eating so it won't look like he's not eating. Yes. And he put more of that dish and he'd be like, for example, um, bring the, let's see, what do they make? Perlo rice. Let's just, because perlo rice is my favorite. So have someone, or if you can make a tray, you make the perlo rice and then you bring the perlo rice and then like you stock up on perlo rice. And, like, that's my thing. I love perlo rice. Trey, you're not going to eat none of the Brussels sprouts and take away from the perlo rice. I'll eat one. And let's just say one last thing. And that is, this is Thanksgiving and there's a lot of people who don't have food that is true. in this world. So even that though you true. may not be a huge fan of her mashed potatoes or her gravy and maybe her bird's a little dry, this is your family. There's love around that table. And uh, it doesn't matter necessarily. Feast if, on the love. You know, if, it doesn't matter if it's your favorite food. Right. This is what you have in life. You're surrounded with love and family. And I think if you have to choke down a couple bites that maybe aren't your favorite, it's worth it's it. what you, you do. You know, Alexis, I think one of the things I will say, and I know we got to wrap, one of the things I will say is that um, in life sometimes you're going to go places where everything is not going to be accommodating to your needs. Mm -hmm. But you got to make it work and be somehow. Polite. And you don't have to eat everything on the table. Find that one thing that you like and make it work. It is Thanksgiving. Of course, we just came out of Thanksgiving, so it was a wonderful time. We're going into Christmas, and tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la, la la, la la. Love it. Listen, we got more, more coming up on the Jeffrey Lavin Show. Coffee cups up and your pinkies out. Put your stockings on. We're going to church. Good morning. We'll be back. Another great show. I'm excited about it. I'm happy. Listen, if you want music from Elijah Bradford and the Valentinos, make sure you um, hit us up um, on the Jeffrey Lampers Show page or the Jeffrey Lampers Show at gmail.com. Thank you last week. Congratulations to the winners last week. You were able to get your iTunes. You got to have iTunes. That's what you got to have. If you have iTunes, I can hook you up with some music. That's what we do here on the Jeffrey Lampers Show. Listen. But coming off of Thanksgiving, going into the holiday season, the word for today, thankful. According to Webster, thankful is defined as showing gratitude or thankfulness. And you know what? I'm thankful this morning. I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for just being able to wake up and see the dawning of a brand new day. You know, I used to hear my parents pray that in their prayers and never really understood it. But at this point in this season in my life, I get it. You know, we need to be thankful. And one of the things I want you to do, stop complaining. Stop complaining about everything. You complain about going to work, but guess what? There's someone who doesn't have a job. You complain, oh, my back hurt, but at least you can feel the ache in your body. There's so many things that we can be thankful for. So I want people to walk out being thankful and just thank God that you're alive, that you're smiling, and you can see the dawning of the brand new day and you can impact someone along the way. Listen, next week we're starting the holiday season. If you have a choir out there, a group who's interested in being on the show for Christmas, come do it. But I gotta go. You've been Lamp. It's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Coffee cups up. Thank you, pal. Here we go. Everybody, everybody get up. Everybody, everybody get up. Come on. Lamp, 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 lamp. And Jeffrey Lamp. Somebody turn the lamp on.